Thank you very much. It's definitely not a time for business as usual. Uh, that's pretty clear, and we've been saying that for a long time, but what's happening that's different now is that uh, it's become a politically uh, important thing not to have business as usual, and certainly it enjoys the widespread uh, public support of people not only here in Canada but elsewhere in the world. That's great news in many ways. We also know that the window of opportunity may not stay open all that long, which means that change may occur quickly and unpredictably. One of the things that I'm interested in very much is looking into the future and bridging beyond this immediate rush to attention around climate change and very important issues to ask the question, what kind of a, a future uh, economy might we have? And I take the view that we are backing our way into something I call the biological economy. Uh, there's all sorts of variations of this term, bio-based economy and so forth. I try to take a large look at it. And my fundamental point is that what we are seeing is that the uh, biological aspects of our lives are going to take up more and more of our attention, uh, our national wealth, and hopefully provide many more opportunities for Canadians and people in other parts of the world. That is my fundamental hypothesis. The areas that I bring forward uh, for consideration would include some of the following. Uh, one is simply our natural resource management. Here in BC, we don't have to look further than the pine bark beetle to know how much it costs us, but there are many other examples. Um, if if uh, one of our persons that we're uh, working with today, uh, Elizabeth Davis from uh, Newfoundland, of course, she would be looking at, at fish, and so would we out on this coast. But uh, the point is that the management costs of dealing with the biological situations will increase and we will have to become much more innovative in how we go about doing things. So that's point one. Point two is that when we look at things like climate change, and I would argue certain other uh, uh, matters as well, but let's just stick with climate change for a moment, and, and we would find again that it's actually mediated through biology. The biology of the oceans becomes critically important. Are we in fact uh, um, creating an environment in the oceans through the carbon dioxide that's going in that's acidifying the oceans and really destroying the fundamental basis of life, the green algae. Um, that's one point. Another point would be uh, that uh, we have this massive land base in Canada. We're major holders of the world's real estate. A lot of that is peat bog. Uh, it's uh, agricultural lands. Are these carbon sinks or carbon uh, emitters? methane gas emitters, etc. So just taking those two examples, we see how we have to deal with a biological situation, because in each case, it's, it's biology that, that controls things, and we don't know enough about these things. So again, that's a science, but it's also a management-based thing, and it's also important in the economy. If one looks at many of the agricultural situations, for example, in Canada, the single most important thing now is not the crop that's grown on it, but the uh, carbon sequestration properties. So another example. Uh, let me give yet another uh, point of view on this, and that is, as we move towards uh, doing things that are cleaning up messes that we've created, and let me give just one example, bioremediation, uh, you know, where we are trying to clean up a, a brownfield site. Um, we do it with little microbes, and do we do it with microbes that have been genetically altered? Do we keep that out of our range of toolkits? Um, one of the interesting things, which might have some application on this coast, is that uh, marine scientists are now looking at bioremediation for cleaning up all the ammunition and torpedoes and uh, stuff that's lying on the bottom of the seas using uh, organisms. So I, I could go on and on and on, but my point would be that we're backing our way into this uh, new world. And it's a new world that's going to come on us very quickly. It's already there, uh, biofuels, for example, uh, where I think as a public policy issue we've done a terrible job um, and, and put our money into the wrong things probably and, and it's costing a huge subsidy which is going to come straight out of our, our wallets uh, uh, in a year's time when we're going into the gas station. But beyond that, um, uh, there are some very interesting options. Um, one that's being worked on, for example, uh, on this coast uh, is at UBC where there are scientists looking at biorefineries using existing pulp mills and using those pulp mills to produce a range of chemicals, including some that would be generated from the waste materials uh, in the waste stream of, of the uh, uh, mills. So um, the point here is that there is an opportunity side to the biological economy as well, 
and one that by and large is not being picked up on either by governments, by industry, except for a few large industries. And, and thirdly, it's, it's a situation in which the governance structure for dealing with this is very, very weak. So uh, I'm, I'm now doing the infomercial part here. Um, we have had a look at, at this, and, and Dale was involved, and uh, another colleague, Stuart Lee here, uh, backstopped this whole effort, and put together a report called BioPromise, uh, with a question mark at the end of it, and tried to look at biotechnology sustainable development in Canada's future economy. Now, we tried to take a, a kind of a, a just imagine approach. What would it be like if we could try and use biotechnologies to say have the, uh, it wouldn't be the only way we do this, but to include it in the mix of things that would have the uh, uh, chemical load that goes into the environment now, or produce say a quarter of the chemicals uh, and, bio and fuels in Canada by 2020. And I could go on, there's a number of different things. Um, now, these are questions that we could raise, and we tried to look at this scientifically, and the answer is very interesting. Uh, the, the first, I've just got a couple of minutes here, but the first point of it would be that yes, there are opportunities. The second point would be, are we prepared? Do we have the ecological knowledge that would tell us whether introducing new kinds of uh, techniques and organisms and so forth, would that be good for the environment? We do not have the ecological knowledge. We need to be developing that now. A second point, and that relates directly back to the uh, a theme over all of this uh, meeting that's gone on here for the last few days, is on the community side of do, what kind of public learning do we need? Uh, do we want to repeat what happened with the genetically modified foods debate? I don't think so. We need a much more sophisticated and, and careful uh, look at things over a long period of time. And thirdly, the governance structure. What regulatory agencies are facing now in relation to genetics, ecosystems, and everything that's in between is very large. They are incapable of dealing with it. And that's, I'm not criticizing the individuals. They work very hard. The structure in which we regulate now is not ready for the biological economy. Uh, and that's a very important point, and it's a point that has to go back to the federal government, and it has to go back to others. We've made some specific suggestions on this, and if we thought that the situation was going to get any easier, the answer is no, because we now have nanotechnology coming along, and then we have bio, nano, IT combinations coming along. So the reality is then that, that there are opportunities uh, for using new technologies, for thinking our way through old problems, uh, such as those related to uh, uh, resource management, that are going to require a careful rethink and not a business as usual approach to dealing with this new biological economy. So there's the flag, I'm waving it, um, and, and uh, you've heard it from me, and uh, it will be important in your lives, particularly if you happen to be a student. Thank you. Thank you, John.